I've been plied with beer to give talks, but I, I think I think the real thing is you. It is a two-way stream. Some people view it as okay, yeah, I'm going to a school and I'm teaching people about science. It, it's not like that. You learn something from the experience, whether it be um, improving your public speaking or, to be honest, looking at your research from a different perspective, because um, you can deliver what you think is the perfect logical process um, of any type of any point of research that you want to explain but as soon as as soon as that's reflected back at you by an audience no matter what age um, you start to see it from different angles and that is what really really changes maybe and maybe makes you think about your research in, in different ways so it's a two-way process um, and it's fun it really is fun as I say um, you get to do things you wouldn't otherwise do go places you wouldn't otherwise go um, and meet people and work with people that you certainly wouldn't otherwise, otherwise work with well the key thing is neutrinos are slippery customers. Um, they're very difficult to detect. Um, the reason for this is we've got 12 basic building blocks of nature. Um, nine of them have an electric charge and so they play nicely with our particle detectors because the only way we can see these particles is through the electromagnetic force. So they need to have an electric charge if we're able to see them. Neutrinos don't um, and they interact only via what we call the weak nuclear force which is responsible for things like um, nuclear decay um, and the processes that are going on in the sun to produce light. Um, and the difficulty about that is is, um, it means that the neutrinos um, really rarely interact with normal matter around us because they see most of the matter around us as pretty much empty space, 99.999% empty space. So there's a very rare chance that a neutrino will actually even notice that there's something around it, let alone interact. Um, and this is interesting because neutrinos um, are still probably the least understood of these 12 building blocks. Um, and we're not entirely sure what secrets they might hold because we're still pinning down their characteristics. Um, we're getting to the point now, excitingly, where we're, we're getting these final characteristics measured and we're, we're, we're pinning them down. And we're getting to the point now where they're going to start unlocking some of their secrets. We don't know what secrets they may hold. We have, we have ideas, of course. Um, we hope that they might be able to address um, the fact that there is more matter in, in exactly everything around us is made from matter than antimatter. Because from a pure energy Big Bang, we should really expect there's equal amounts of matter and antimatter, but that's not what we find. We live in a purely matter dominated universe. So, what happened to the antimatter, or what, rather, why does nature prefer matter over antimatter? And we believe that that answer might be locked in the neutrino, um, as well as other very more, you know, much more fundamental key things that might actually kind of allow us to understand the very fabric of, of nature itself.